finger. Manute, right? You guys are hot. Now here's ABC 15's Craig Fui. That's right, the sports director from ABC 15. KNXV joins us now on the right Twitter guest line as he does each and every Monday. Even if it's a day off, he is on with us here on Rock Minutes with Jimmy B. How are we doing, Philly? I am good. Got a chance to watch the Cardinals practice this morning here from Coach Gannon. So it always starts off a good week when you get it to be out at some football practice. Is it any better than what we saw on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it was just shells kind of walked through stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it was better. Okay, good. <laughs> and so they, they didn't lose. <laughs> and now they did on Saturday night, shells just kind of walked through well, stuff? Yeah. Hey, listen, I think we saw Saturday night what a Super Bowl champion team looks like. Yeah. And it's and it's not the team in red and white. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, it's it's those Chiefs are just rolling. And we saw a team that may win three games this year, uh, too, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. All right, that, that kind of segues into our first question for Factor Fooey with ABC 15's Craig Fooey. All right, the Cards 38-10 to preseason loss to those Chiefs showed just that they are definitely a team in a rebuilding mode. Factor Fooey, rebuilding mode. What? Well, I, 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 I'm going to say a fact with an asterisk by it because okay. we've known this for months. We've yeah. known this, right? You look at the roster and the – what do they do in the offseason? Uh, nothing for the roster, really. Um, got rid of uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, uh, they, they just haven't done much in, in, through free agency that, that just sort of raised the flag going, man, this team's all in. Um, the, Paris Johnson Jr. starting at right tackle. That's a nice draft pick, right? He's looking good um, so far. But we know this team is, is in rebuild mode. I know Jonathan Gannon says, I, I shudder at the thought of, I, I don't like that word rebuild. But it is what it is, right? They're, they're not a good football team. We saw that Saturday. It was put on display. But it's not something we didn't know coming in. Um, it was funny. I had somebody talk to me before the game Saturday out at the stadium, and they said, hey, I'm, I'm starting to put together a story on the Cardinals might start 3-0. and What do you think? And I said, I think you're crazy is what I think. Right? It ain't going to happen. They're not starting 3-0. and Maybe 0-3. Uh, Coach, question number two, uh, and speaking of that, uh, the Cardinals' lack of depth reared its ugly head in the second half, allowing the Chiefs' backups to outscore them 21-3. to Backed or fooey? Well, I'm going to say fooey on that because I think we saw it early when the te- the Chiefs' second-team offense drove down the field against the first-team defense of the Cardinals. So I don't think we had to wait that long to see that. Um, the second unit of the Chiefs outmanned the Cardinals' first unit defense. So this is going to be a long season, guys. Just strap in and get ready for it. All right, Coach, here we go. And remember, Manute writes the questions. Uh, oh, boy. The, yeah, the Cardinals are stuck. With Isaiah Simmons for now, he's out of position and getting. Well, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to say fact, but I got to give a little credit to all this to the Cardinal staff over the last few years because he's never known what his position is sure. here, right? Yep. Yeah, I true. mean, when he got here, they put him at inside linebacker, and even in training camp as a rookie, they had him playing inside linebacker, then work out with the corners, then work out with the safeties, then go back to the outside linebackers. I mean, this kid's head is swimming. There's no question he's a he's a incredible athlete. He can run. He's huge. Um, he's he's an impressive figure when you stand next to the guy. But I just think he's been confused from the get go as to what is my role. Now he's got a whole new coaching staff with a whole new defensive scheme. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a break because he's a tremendous athlete. But just he's just not settled in yet. And, and coach is is B.J. Delar who's who's looking right now. He's petulant that will that will linebacker. Uh, that much better, and, and you wonder why. I know he's more physical of a kid, a little, little, but I just, I just with the experience that uh, that Isaiah has uh, at the outside backer, you know, we know he can't play inside. I, I just understand where the miss or disconnect is with this young man. I don't know, but it's been that way, Nooch. Like I said, for yeah. for a long time, Nooch. I mean, it's just been that thing from the get go when the Cardinals put him at inside, and then they were practicing. And you know, we kept asking. It's like, where is he going to play? Well, we're not sure. He's going to be an inside linebacker. But you're practicing him with safeties. You're practicing him with, you know. So I think it's been a, a really tough transition for him. But you can see, even on plays when he gets beat, he still has the speed to catch up and try to make plays. But he's just not seeing things the way he should be. All right, let's get to question three. ABC 15's Craig Fooey. Excuse me, four. D-backs manager Tori Luvello should be given a huge amount of credit of keeping this D-backs focused during the slump and getting it back to just one game out of the wild card. Fact or food? Absolutely. That's yes. a fact. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, man, this team, we were talking about it last night here, Colin and I on our show. It's like this guy, I mean, this team was in first place before the All-Star break. 
Then the wheels fell off in late July, and now look where they're at. I mean, they're right back in the hunt. Um, they've stayed the course. They've got a tough schedule ahead, though. I mean, you look at what they've got coming in. The Rangers for two, the Reds for four. Then they're, then they're at the Dodgers. You know, then they go to the Orioles, or the, excuse me, Orioles at home for three. Uh, they see the Rockies in early September, but it's a, it's a rough go here for the, for the D backs. They got the Cubs at the Cubs, the Cubs at home, the Mets. It ain't going to be an easy walk in to the uh, postseason, but they're back. And that's the exciting thing. So Tori Lovello is a key for me. All right, last one, Coach ASU head coach Kenny Dillingham needs to pick his starting Q-back quarterback ASAP and start getting his first team offense in real game mode in 10 days from now. Fact or fooey? Fact, but I think they've already picked him. I think it's going to be Jaden Rashada. I think he's the guy that's got the inside track now, and I think they know that. They're just not telling anybody because you know how paranoid coaches are, right? Yep. They don't want anybody to know who the starter is. They don't want any film. They don't want anybody to see anything or know anything. So paranoia still is uh, is number one for coaches. But, yeah, I think I think they're going to go with the freshman, Jaden Rashada, and I think that's going to be a done deal because you just look at him. And I was up at Tanazona a week ago for three practices up there with them, and, and he just got better and better each day. And certainly in the scrimmage on Saturday, from where he started that scrimmage to where he ended it, Jaden Rashada made huge strides. Let me just follow up with that then since you were able to watch that. Did Trenton Borgay, the starter last year, game fall off, or is it just a case where you just see so much more out of Rashada? Yeah, I think that's it, Kenny I, or Jimmy. I said I think it's. I start talking to Kenny Dillingham. Kenny, um, Jimmy, I think that's it. It was not that Trenton Borgay is terrible. Like the guy started five games, played in seven last year. Uh, he's got the leadership skills. The players respect him. But when you see Jaden Rashada, six foot four inch, and the, the ability to run, and some of the balls he threw up there at Tanazona were just on the money. I mean, tight spirals and deep. And I just don't know that Trenton Borgay has that same arm strength. I know he doesn't. So it's just a matter of you've got to go with a young guy. And if you're a new coaching staff, brand new team coming in with not a whole lot of expectations, I think you go with the freshman and let him play and let him earn his stripes. And Coach, I thought what you guys did with the, you know showing a lot of the highlights was the heat watching him uh, or watching him or filming him throw the ball down the field. He had a couple of posts and he threw a couple of fades. I mean, yep. the term juice seems like he got a little more juice. And guys, you know, they love that to see that ball getting stretched down the field, especially Kenny. They they do, and you know this when you've got an athletic quarterback like that, the players respond to that, right? He's out there giving it the all he's got, and he's running, and he can run. He can get outside and and scramble. So. He's got an arm that won't quit. So I think I think he's the guy, and I think the players are responding to him. I'm real curious to get your opinion on what has taken place so far with the Pac Four and the people and the people and the people <laughs> Three that, are, minutes. that are trying to maneuver to get the ACC to accept Stanford and then also SMU. They're going to leave Cal in the dust, Oregon State and Washington State in the dust. It appears right now that the vote by the ACC, they're, they're already done with that. Do you have any information at all what else their plan could be to try to keep it the Pac-12 and bring in other schools? Well, I think if, if I'm on the Titanic with George Klyovkov, I am doing my best. <laughs> I am doing my best to gather Boise State, Fresno State, San Diego State, um, maybe a few other schools and trying to at least get to a Pac-8, if not a Pac-10. And I'm, I'm doing, there, apparently from what I'm hearing, there's money available in the Pac-12 coffers hmm. to pay some of the exit fees for some of these, these Mountain West teams. Okay. And so if, if I'm Klyovkov and we see the bow of the boats going down, we are trying everything we can to reach out to teams and say, look, we can resurrect the Pac-10 at least and get you guys on board and keep Stanford, Cal, Washington. Two Oregon, minutes. Add four, five, six more teams and we could be a viable conference and you guys will make more money in TV revenue than you do. And so let's try. I think that's where they're trying to go. And I think Washington State um, president and athletic director, Oregon State's president, and athletic director, I think Cal's, I think they're trying to do that with Klyovkov to salvage a conference. Is it, I think that's where they're, they're leaning. Is it Klyovkov or is it Oliver Luck? Uh, Oliver Luck who's doing this, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a big part of it because Oliver Luck clearly has a lot of respect around the country, right? So yes. he's the guy that's going to be out there fronting this whole thing and trying to get guys on board. But they are – 
they're in desperation mode, make no mistake about it, but I think they're going to try and, and resurrect the pack, whatever it ends up being. Have a good week, Fooey. Thank you. You got it, fellas, anytime. That's ABC 15's Craig Fooey. Fact or Fooey. One Appreciate minute, that. one Check minute. Check out on ABC 15. Uh,